sag, hum, ripple, bias, bias X. What do these things mean? What are they? They're in your helix. They're in your HX stop. Do you know what they do? Do you know how to use them to get the tone you want? Well, today I'm gonna help you do just that. I'm gonna give you a quick guide today to understand these parameters and teach you how to use them so you can get the tone that you're looking for. But first, if you want a step-by-step -step guide in understanding how to get the most out of your Helix or HX Stomp, I created a free PDF called my Tone Secrets PDF, Tone Secrets Guide. There are pictures and words for all of us very visual people you can follow along, build a preset from the ground up at your own pace. If you're interested in that, click the link in the description. Also, a friend of mine, Drew, over at Vinseat Design Company, just dropped some fresh new hoodies. They look amazing. They say, by grace alone on them, which is just awesome. Drew is one of the drummers at my worship ministry, and we both love leading this song together by the Modern Post. It's just a great story of God's grace. It's a song that tells our story inside the gospel, how we were dead in our sin, but God came after us. He paid our debt, and now we are heaven citizens by grace and grace alone. Amen. The hoodies are a great conversation starter and a great way to share your faith while looking good. They're high quality and what's good for you is if you use the code HEYWORSHIPLEADER at checkout, you get 10% off. And hey, I'm helping you with your Christmas shopping. No more procrastinating. Get one for yourself, obviously. Get another one for a friend to give away. There you go. Don't say I'm not trying to help you out. You can click the link in the description to choose your favorite. I personally like the headline style, but the rugged script style is, is pretty cool as well. They also have a, a zip up version for those of us who don't want to mess up our hair. Go check them out. And while you're over there, you can see all the design work that Drew does, whether you want like a new logo or even a new tattoo design, he will hook you up. One more thing. If you don't know, we're in the middle of a giveaway. I'm giving away the Westminster Effects Augsburg Fender-like amp sim. This thing sounds amazing. I'm giving away live November 12th on a live stream. And I'm also doing some other giveaways for those who are there on the live stream. So you can win this even if you don't show up, but you should show up because it's always anticlimactic when I'm trying to give away something and the person who won is not on the live stream. I'm like, hey, thanks for showing up, but none of y'all won. So make sure you're there. It's noon on November 12th. I'm going to be giving this away and some other cool things. So check it out and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything because my next video is going to be running something very special into this. You're not going to want to miss it. All right, let's get into it. All right, so I created some presets over here so we can understand what's happening and then I'll show you exactly what to do to get the tone that you're looking for because all of this stuff is just preference. And I'll also say these parameters that we're going to be adjusting are very closely tied to the amp gain or drive and the master volume of each amp. And so if you have the, the amp drive down or the master down, you might not hear that much of a difference. In these presets, I've cranked the master volume and I had the drive up pretty high so we can hear exactly what's going on. Here's our bass tone. <laughs> Nice and dirty. Like I said, I have the uh, amp drive way higher than I probably normally would, but that's why we have such a thick sound. But this is going to help us hear what the difference is. So the first parameter we're going to be looking at is sag, and I have it all the way off right now, which gives us the the tightest sound. When it's when it's all the way off, all the way to the left, we have a very tight sound. When we turn our sag all the way up, we get more of a, a dynamic sound, uh, dynamics to our picking and maybe more sustain. I have this set to foot switch one, and I also have a volume change happening when I go from sag zero all the way to 10. I boost the volume because when you bump up the sag, it kind of brings the volume down because the dynamics have changed. And so I'm trying to not focus on volume. So I try to dial it in to where the volumes are the same so we can hear what the sag is. So here again is our original and then I'll bump the sag up so you can hear what it's doing. Now this parameter might be more of a feel thing. I don't know if you can hear it as much as I can feel it. I think there is a, a volume difference, but uh, when it's when the sag is all the way up, there's kind of like this lead into the tone rather than it just being right there. The tightness of it being all the way off is just, uh, it's a lot more tight. <laughs> And so they say that the tighter sounds could be more for like metal, if you're going for a metal tone, which I don't know how many metal heads we have here on the worship channel. If you are, let me know down in the description. No, the comments. I say description a lot. It's in the comments. Anyways, and they say when the sag is all the way up, that could be more like for a blues sound. So um, just kind of that. 
That's my blues. That's what I have for blues. All right, next we have Hum and Ripple. Um, both of these are designed to kind of give you like realistic amp noises, like additional amp noises that you would get with a tube amp to kind of help those of you who think that these all-in-one units are too digitally. So you can actually add in some noises that you may not want. I don't usually want these, but they're there if you want them. The hum mimics the heater hum that you would get from a tube amp, and it sounds like this. This is with it all the way off, so there's no hum. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on. And there's the hum, and it's really loud because I have the drive up all the way, and this is the hum up all the way. And when that hum is there, then when you play, especially higher notes, you kind of get like some different fre frequencies cutting through. So without it, you kind of have something like this. That may sound ridiculous to you, but if you were to bring it down here where there's like a slight, which depending on what kind of headphones you're listening to, you might not be able to hear the hum that I'm hearing right now, but I hear a little bit of a hum here at six. Yeah, so it kind of just depends on what you're going for. Let's hear the ripple. The ripple kind of does the same thing. So I'm gonna bring the hum all the way down. The ripple all the way down is just our clean tone. And then all the way up, there's no hum to it, but now we kind of have. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's like a second, what do you call it, like a harmonic or another note behind the note I'm playing. Is the note. I hear under. And then without it, that just that note disappears. Without the ripple, you just have the note you're playing. So yeah, those are stuff you can add. Um, say we wanted to add all the hum. I mean, some of the hum and all the ripple you might have, and the sag is halfway. Uh, you might have a sound that you really like. <laughs> Does it sound like a more realistic amp? Let me know down in the comments. All right, the next one, bias. Now, this might be something that a lot more of you are familiar with if you came from the tube amp world before you got into the world of Helix. Not all of you did, but I know some of you did. And a lot of you were used to getting your tube, your tubes biased, either colder or hotter, depending on how you wanted them to respond as the current is flowing through them. Now, if you're like me, I played through a Fender Blues Junior and those tubes aren't biased, so this was something I had to had to learn. It's not something I ever messed with before. But basically, if the bias is all the way off, you have more of a, a colder bias, and that's kind of like a class AB, which is a sound that gives you more headroom, and then when the bias is all the way up, it gives you more of a class A sound. And the best way I can describe this is like a class A sound is like when it's biased, hotter, I guess. It's when your tubes are like revved up, ready to go. Um, they're already, the RPMs are already up here and as soon as you attack the string, it's ready to go. But then you don't have as much dynamics as like if it's a colder bias, then you have more of this warming up to the sound. And it's kind of a, a strange way to think about it, but here's what it sounds like. So this is with the bias all the way off. And there's also a volume change, so I tried to keep the volumes the same on this one as well. So bias all the way off. So it's just right there, immediate. When the bias is all the way up, it's like power immediately. And this almost feels like, kind of like the sag did, where it's like, it's. It's bringing it in a little bit, but you'll notice the sag is when we put the sag all the way up and the bias is when the bias is all the way off. Either way, you need to ask the question like, what is the sound or the tone you're going for or even the feel that you're going for? 
my preference is that I like the sound to be more immediate, like a like the bias being more class A rather than a colder bias. That's just my preference, but you got to answer what do you like? All right, now this bias X or bias excursion determines how the power amps will sound when they are being pushed. Again, our gain is up high, our master volume is up high so we can hear this. And much like the sag, when the bias crossover is all the way off, we have a more tighter feel and when it's all the way up, it's it leaves more room for compression or sustain. So here's what it sounds like with it off. So when the when the bias X is all the way up, you can kind of hear maybe a little more fizziness. So I feel like when the when the bias X is all the way off, I hear just distortion, not necessarily fizziness. And when it's all the way up, and these are extreme settings, I kind of hear like a little bit of fizziness. Something up there. Okay, I created two more presets to kind of dial these in because I, I just showed you what they are independently, but they all kind of interact with each other as well. And so I have a preset here called Sluggish, which you can already hear it. It's the sag all the way up, the hum not all the way up because that was just too much hum. The ripple all the way up so we get a lot of those dirty notes. The bias all the way down so we have a more of a sag and the bias crossover all the way up to get even more of that like sustain, that sag. So this is like, the sluggish sound. Still sounds good. That hum is just, like I said, if you're not wearing like headphones that really capture it, it, it can be a little much, but. That still sounds really good though. I like that sound. It's, it's not usually what I would go for, but it sounds amazing. And then I have one here called tight, which is just the opposite. I have the sag all the way off, the hum all the way off, the ripple all the way off, the bias all the way hot. So we have that initial attack and the bias crossover all the way off again. So this should be like the tightest uh, if you're going for more of a metal sound, this is the tightness that you might would want. Now I didn't change any of the gain or the master volume, the drive is the same, but the way these settings are affecting, pushing the amp, it just sounds completely different. So here's the tight again. Sluggish. A lot less uh, gain on the tight setting. I also have the channel volume almost halfway down because this tighter setting is way louder. Um, the higher gain stuff is is more like compressed. So I had to bring the volume all, all the way like all the way down to 5.5 rather than 10 on this sluggish preset. So uh, that's just for your information. That's what the channel volume is for. And if you don't know. Channel volume does not affect the tone, it is merely pure volume in or out. So don't worry about the channel volume affecting your tone, it's just if you need to bring something in or out based on how you're using these other parameters, like I did, uh, yeah, that's what it's there for. Let's see how this sluggish and tight um, respond to overdrive sounds real quick before we go. This is the Tube Screamer. <laughs> Here's the tight preset with the OCD. So yeah. All 
right, so there you have it. Hopefully this was helpful for you to see what you need to do to get the sound you're looking for. Again, I like, personally, I like more of a, a tighter sound. Not as tight as the, the tight preset where everything was at as extreme, but I don't like as much sag, as much of the class A, B. I like the more class A, tighter, hot, ready to go type of sound, but you might be different and your guitar might respond differently. There's a lot of factors and there's so much flexibility you have to adjust it to sound exactly like you want. I know a lot of people, if you do like a quick Google search, there's like discussion boards where people are like, yeah, I usually just leave those alone. And, and you can, the, the amps sound good, but if there's something that you're feeling like, oh, it's just not, it's just not like I want, or if you, if you have a tube amp that you used to love and you're trying to get it to sound more like it, maybe the answer is in these parameters. If this was helpful, let me know down in the comments, like the video if you did. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Don't forget the giveaway happening on November 12th at noon, going live. You don't wanna miss it. Giving away some other things as well, so be there. Thank you guys for watching these videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.